are we? Somewhere near the sunny coast of the Mediterranean, certainly. Or is this an Italian opera out in the open air? It's roses, roses all the way. This, wherever it is, is a land of happiness. A land of simple happiness because, look, there's a crown of flowers for the village beauty who will be Rose Queen. They're crowning a queen here in this little village. Here's where they gather roses, and there are 15 billion rose trees in this valley to make a rose perfume famous throughout the world. Don't let us spoil the romance of it with statistics, but for every gram of this attar of rose perfume distilled and captured, 27,000 roses must be plucked in the early morning before the bold sun has stolen the scent and simply squandered it away in the country air. Valley of Roses. There's no other rosy valley like this in the whole wide world. It's unique. And the cash value of the aroma here in the air is over 40 million pounds a year. Imagine that. But where are we? There's a clue in the writing, but we're not in Russia, that's for certain. This is a land that symbolically lives on roses. On sunshine, on delicate crops, on subtle loveliness. Here they're distilling the perfume of the valley, which is worth, in hard fact, more than half as much again as its weight in gold. But don't mention gold, because now we're in a monastery. Where can we be? There are a lot of monasteries here, and in a way the monks are heroes, though this is a communist country. This is Bulgaria, a country on the Black Sea the size of Ireland. And for 500 years of Turkish domination, it was the monks that kept their national spirit and their language alive. This is the call to prayer. Prayer, here at the Preobajensky Monastery, which is the centerpiece and purpose of life of these citizens of an officially irreligious country. Like so many monks everywhere, they make wine growing and farming, generally, their contribution to life. The fact that Bulgaria is what they call a socialist state makes it a surprise for us in the West to find that it's a rosy land of scent and honey and the luxuries of life, like strawberries which are exported from here to countries all over the continent. But we're beginning to learn some exciting things about little Bulgaria, as she, in turn, is learning things about us. The simple life, the sort of farm we in the busy West look for to find peace on. But even here, where they crave for peace, such sleepy farms are getting rare. They've got modern machinery on the new farms where they've banded together. But you still find the simple life within easy reach. The new and the very old alongside, and that's very, very old. But in Bulgaria, you'll encounter the ancient attractions in combination with the most modern conveniences. You're approaching Sofia, the capital city, not four hours away from London. Sofia has become a tourist magnet that holidaymakers the world over, who are seeking that decimal difference, find difficult to resist. Join these miscellaneous modern wanderers and see if you share their amazement and their taste. Only two out of 25 Bulgarians live in their main city but they all contrived to visit it and savor its history. The fifth largest cathedral and its new TV tower, largely British built. You can win 2,000 pounds on the monthly lottery, or a car, or a flat. Roses, roses everywhere on the boulevards, and handcraft pottery in the market that really is quaint in the most genuine meaning of the word. Flowers mean as much to Bulgarians as patriots like Georgi Dimitrov, their pre-war anti-Hitler hero, remembered today with ceremonial guards, such as you used to see in Turnover, their old capital. Imagine this river fortress of a city built on three hills when there were marauders. The houses put their heads together over narrow streets and the inhabitants closed their ranks, as now only holidaymakers do, marching out for a mountain barbecue.
Here's where the Balkan Mountains dip down to the holiday coast of the Black Sea. And Western visitors find the warm welcome implied in a drink from the wooden wedding bottle, the most complimentary prelude to kebab in the open air. Just listen to the mountain music. Simplicity in the mountain foothills. Sumptuous luxury is the short drive away in the coastal resorts. Golden Sands, they call the beach where they built these luxury hotels. East and West meet here where 250 miles of sunshine shore have been developed as an exciting new polyglot playground for the world. Once they say you could stand at the bridge at Istanbul and if you waited long enough, meet everyone from everywhere that you'd ever known. Today, this can happen here because these golden sands now belong to a new discerning world of youngsters in search of fun. From May right through to October, the nearest thing to rain will be a splash of sea spray. But there's a breeze blowing gently in from the blue sea from sunrise to dusk, and at night a warm land breeze blowing out. Bulgaria was built for the carefree holiday. On the coast, all the way up in the hills, you eat the spicy foods and drink red kadaka wine, and you feel rosy. Rosy is the rose liqueur that they make after they've captured the first distillate of rose perfume back in that valley of roses, from the billions of delicate petals that symbolize this smiling land. <laughs> 